All right, everybody. Uh, this is kind of crazy. It's actually my third attempt at trying to get this unboxing video done. I've had a bunch of technical issues with my setup. It turns out that my earlier recordings, the app that I'm using to record the video is recording from my good microphone and from the camera microphone at the same time. So I was getting this really muddled sound and I couldn't figure out why. So I finally got that figured out and then shot the video with good sound and then had my head cropped. So it looked a little silly. And now I'm finally going back to it with uh, what I hope is a good setup. Anyway, um, what I've got here tonight is a new bike. I actually uh, decided to invest in a new gravel bike. Uh, I've had a Diamondback Honjo uh, comp, Honjo comp for a while, which I bought from REI back in 2014. And it's been a really good bike. It's just, uh, it, was, it was very entry level, it was 105, kind of a mixed group. It's been upgraded since then to 10 speed Ultegra, but the bike is starting to show its age. And to be honest, I just kind of want to have something new to play with. So. Um, started looking at bikes, and I've been looking at steel gravel bikes for a while, which is a little bit different from what a lot of my friends are riding. They're, they're riding carbon or aluminum bikes, uh, mostly carbon. Um, I wanted something a little bit more durable than, than carbon. Uh, I've had a, a couple of crashes riding off-road, and you know I don't have the greatest bike handling skills in the world, so I know I'm going to crash again. And the thing with a carbon bike, you know, if you crash it on gravel, there's a good chance it's going to get broken. So I kind of wanted to go with something a little more robust. and. Um, Aluminum is fine, but it's also, uh, you know, I've done aluminum before and I wanted to do something different. I wanted to kind of go back to something a little more old school. So I started looking at steel bikes and there's a few out there. Uh, Kona has, uh, I think their Roadhouse and uh, Rally, I think, makes one. And then there's uh, one I saw recently, which was the Breezer Inversion, which looked really nice. It's just, uh, there was a couple of things about the group set that I didn't like. And it has a funny mix of flat mount front disc brake and the post mount rear disc brake and by the time I got the thing all kind of priced out to you know to what it was going to be to build the way I wanted uh, it was about the same as the bike I got which was the Niner RLT9 steel so I uh, found a good deal on Jensen USA ordered the bike and it came in yesterday so let's go ahead and see what's in the box I've already cut the tape like I said I've done this a few times already so um, you know it's already all bad, but uh, We'll, we'll do it like it's the first time. <laughs> so inside the box, uh, first thing you find is this little smaller box, and inside here they've got some miscellaneous stuff. This is uh, kind of receipts and uh, paperwork from Jensen USA, um, and they're, they're doing a sticker and some other stuff in there. Um, part of the build on the bike is that you do get pedals, which is kind of nice. A lot of times, you know, you order a new bike. There's no pedals, or if there's anything, there's some kind of cheesy flat pedals. Uh, Jensen sends the bike with pedals. You get to choose what you want, depending on what you pick. The price either goes up or down a little bit. These uh, Shimano PDM 520s aren't anything fancy, but they'll work for me. And they, I think, took the price of the bike up or down by four bucks. I can't remember which way it went. So there we are. Uh, ironically, I may not even ride with these initially. I may just throw some looks on here and use my road shoes, just because. You know, up front, probably most of the riding I'll do will be on the road. Uh, Niner includes a chainstay protector. So, not sure if I want to put this on just because it is kind of black and neoprene-y. Uh, <laughs> I kind of think I might put a wheels manufacturing uh, plastic chainstay protector on there instead, just to keep the bike looking clean. Cassette spacer, in case I decide to switch to 10 speed at some point in the future. And then uh, your standard owner's manual, which doesn't really have any great details. It's just kind of your standard generic, how to fit the bike, safety, etc, etc. Uh, there's some inter information here on like the, uh, the biocentric bottom bracket. So it's a little bit better than most of your manufacturer, you know, owner's manuals. And I think that makes sense because Niner's kind of a specialty brand. And then there's a couple of plugs, which I assume for, are for maybe uh, cable ports on the bike. Uh, it has, I think, internal routing for uh, the shifters. So that may be what that's for. And since the bike setup is a one by, maybe this is for uh, front derailleur cable parts, which wouldn't be used on this bike. So there's that. And then inside the box, the thing that comes out first are the wheels. And these are the wheels that come with the bike. They're uh, Niner branded. I have no idea who actually makes them. It's a 28 spoke wheel with a center lock rotor. I think it's center lock. Use our six bolt on an adapter. Maybe six bolt on an adapter, but. Uh, Avid rotors, nothing wrong with that. 
And then uh, it's got the Schwalbe G1 performance tire. Um, and I am not sure if these are tubeless ready or not. I, I was looking at the Schwalbe website today and I couldn't really tell. Um, you know, that's for sure the G1 performance Evo tire is available in a tubeless ready. I'm just not sure if this is that tire. It's always hard to tell with, with uh, some of these tire manufacturers because they make so many different variations on things. But uh, there it is, there's front wheel. wheel. Again, six bolt rotor on an adapter and uh, SRAM Apex 1x cassette. It's an 11 to 42 cassette. Looks gigantic because I'm used to looking at road bikes or 2x11 uh, or two by, two by setups. So there we go. Looks good. Put that aside. And then the bike actually is packed really cleverly. They've, they've put it on this side. Uh, the whole thing is on a card. So, you know, you pull the whole thing out in one piece like this, which is really cool because uh, having done this three times now, it's gone back in the box and come out a few times, and it's just super easy to work with. Uh, so I really like this packing method. And uh, you know, they've done a nice job. Everything's padded. I don't think anything was rubbing. There was a piece of cardboard in between the wheels and the bike in the box. So it looks really good. Um, again, it's a SRAM Apex 1x. This uh, SRAM S350 crank, I think, is essentially Apex level. Uh, I can't really tell if there's a whole lot of difference on the website for, uh, for SRAM. 12 millimeter and 15 millimeter through axles, uh, hydraulic Apex brakes, and then, of course, steel frame. Uh, one thing I noticed is that um, all the stuff that normally would be like a sticker, like you know the, the, some of these things here for size and that sort of thing, are actually uh, painted into the frame, which is kind of nice. So there's, there's no weird stickers to, to peel off. Maybe this guy here. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about this. Um, oh, brazons. It's got, it's got brazons everywhere. Um, there's rack mounts, you know, on the, on the chain, on the uh, seat stays here, bottle mounts here, bottle mount here, underneath the down tube. There's actually a couple of brazons up on the top tube, as far as I know. Um, the fork has brazons on both sides, so the bike is set up for racks or water bottles or whatever you want to do. Um, you can just go crazy with this. And I think that fits with what Niner says about this bike, which is that it's uh, not just a gravel bike, it's kind of a gravel adventure, possibly even touring bike. Um, so it's, it's kind of different. It's, it's an interesting thing. It's, it's a little bit different than usual, uh, you know, more race-oriented gravel bike. Um, <clears throat> I'm really excited to get out and ride it. Um, the geometry is very similar to my Hanjo. So it's got a nice tall, I think 145 or 150 millimeter head tube in this size. This is a 53 centimeter. Um, and the stack and reach are kind of right where I want them. So uh, I'm really looking forward to riding it. I think it'll fit me really well. So we'll see once, once I get it built up. Uh, one thing I'm gonna change out, the crank that comes on this is a 172.5. And I've kind of switched down to a super small crank. So I ride a 165, even though I'm 5'9 and have like a 32 or 33 inch inseam. For me, a really short crank just feels good. And uh, there's some science behind that too that says that that actually may be more efficient. So I tried it on my road bike and I really like it. So I think I'm gonna do it on this bike as well. I actually have the, the other crank on order. So I will, uh, I think I'm gonna quit here and I'll pick up again once I've got this bike on a stand and I'm building it up. Thank you.